Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Artist Loft class on limited perspective urban sketching. Um, this is the first in a little series of classes for the rest of the month um, on focusing on urban sketching. So we've got uh, tonight's or I guess this is the last class of November. So yeah, I was like, wait, it's not all of December because the last class of December is a, a figure drawing class. But for the next three classes, uh, it'll be all focused on uh, urban sketching. So tonight's class is a free class on um, limited perspective urban sketching. And we're going to cover um, using pen and ink how to just do some sketches to get you started that don't use a whole lot of uh, perspective drawing. And uh, then we'll have uh, two more free classes on urban sketching using watercolor markers over the next couple weeks. It's a two part class. And um, then there is a premium class on uh, sketching clouds in pen and ink, and we'll cover the four shading techniques, hatching, cross hatching, stippling, and scribbling in uh, pen and ink in a lot of detail in that premium class. And we'll talk about uh, drawing clouds, which if you follow my artwork, you know I'm a cloud painter and sketcher. So I'm going to reveal some of my the cloud drawing secrets in that premium class. You definitely uh, don't want to miss that. And all of those classes are up on the Michaels website. So you can go ahead and sign up and make sure that you don't uh, miss them. OK, so I'll go ahead and switch to my tabletop view and we will go over supplies for tonight's class. Uh, don't forget to tag your work with those hashtags, make it with Michaels or Michaels classes and follow or tag me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art. Uh, there's some of my cloud art on these two business cards that I'm always showing you, um, but I've got plenty more work that you can check out on Instagram or Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art on Facebook. And uh, tonight we really can get by on the, with the whole class using just uh, the uh, Artist Loft illustration pens, but you might want to have the uh, sketching pencil set and an eraser on hand as well. And I have the uh, larger sketchbook here. It's the 11 by 14 uh, sketchbook, Artist Loft 11 by 14 sketchbook. And then I included some reference photos which are printed out here and there's a lot of them. So I've got them printed double sided here on the page and a lot of them have clouds. So um, we'll be using these in the next two classes as well in the uh, urban sketching using watercolor markers class over the next couple of weeks. We'll have these same reference photos. And then the cloud sketching class, um, we can definitely look at these clouds for references, but I'm gonna kind of show you um, uh, a trick that can, you know, be a, applied. I mean, clouds are so nebulous. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll save all that for the, the premium class. And there will be a little bit of cloud sketching, um, you know, obviously in the these next few classes, but um, I'll really go in depth in the, the premium class on that. Okay, so any questions about supplies or those reference photos before we get started tonight? Uh, we just have one. Oh, you cut out Chanel. Sorry, I accidentally closed Zoom. Um, um, we just have one question, and that is um, that they do not have the same pencils as you today. Is it okay if they use their own? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, I've got the, the Artist Loft uh, sketching pencils with, um, so yeah, any pencil is fine. I'm honestly not really going to use a pencil. I'm going to just use the pens, but if you feel more comfortable sketching first, then by all means, uh, grab some pencils. Um, but I'm, um, and then we have one more question. Um, what number of pens will we need to pull out to use? 
Um, so the artist loft pencils come with, um, oh, I don't know why I switched. I thought the question was going to be something else for some reason. So I switched back and then actually would rather show you the pens. Um, so they come in three, um, three sizes. It's uh, the 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0 0.5. Um, I guess there, there's also the brush pen that Artist Loft makes in the illustration pens, but uh, we're not going to use the brush pens tonight. We're going to use just the uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and 0 0.5. Good questions. Okay, so um, before the class started, I and Chanel and I were talking about what um, classes I might refer back to in tonight's class. I had her grab the link to uh, the landscape studies class from the summer, this past summer, landscape studies in grayscale. So uh, she's going to drop the link to that class in the chat. But um, as I was talking about the class, I realized um, you might also want to refer back to the perspective uh, drawing classes that we did um, almost a full year ago or more. Um, I had a whole series of linear perspective classes on, uh, so there was, um, and I cannot recall the exact names of them, but if we search artist loft and perspective drawing, they should um, all come up. And there was one on uh, atmospheric perspective, there was one on linear perspective, one, two, and three point perspective, and then there was a whole series of um, mixed media classes where we applied perspective drawing to a uh, photograph of a house, and we did a little mixed media drawing of that house. And then I haven't really revisited um, a lot of linear perspectives since then. Um, but I've wanted to do some urban sketching for a while. But one thing that I have encountered every time I've taught urban sketching outside of these Michaels classes is, um, you know, I often have students who uh, I've taught a number of mixed media classes for adults where I do urban sketching and I don't always have time to go through a uh, linear perspective. So I have a lot of tricks that I use to limit the perspective. So tonight's class is not using a whole lot of linear perspective, but I know there are gonna be some of you who just wanna put it in there and want some help with it. So you can refer back to those, uh, those perspective classes if necessary. All of these photographs that I included have very limited perspective. So what do I mean by that? I mean that I took the photographs from a very deliberate angle um, facing the, the buildings from a distance to where we could easily just ignore the, uh, the perspective, the linear perspective that's happening here by just drawing the basic shapes of the fronts of the buildings. Um, and then also a lot of the skylines in these photographs are uh, silhouetted. So there's not a whole lot of perspective happening here because it's basically just a big, you know, silhouette of shapes that create the, uh, the horizon and the skyline there. And it's more about the, uh, the landscape. So that's why we can refer back to that grayscale landscape class if you uh, want some help with, you know, just atmospheric perspective and composition with landscapes. Um, but the main focus of tonight's class is going to be getting started with urban sketching. So urban sketching is super fun. I love teaching it. I love doing it. It's extremely gratifying. And I've taught it for a number of years in a number of classes. It can be done. It's if you're familiar with plein air sketching or drawing or painting, plein air means in the open air or outdoors. And I looked up um, what the official definition of urban sketching was years ago to try to, you know, decipher what's the difference between just outdoor drawing and sketching and urban sketching. Yes, it's more of an urban landscape as compared to 
plein air landscapes are usually more uh, traditional. I'm saying plein air like the, the French uh, term P-L-E-I-N, which means um, like open air or out, out basically just fresh air, the, the plain air, but it's plein, P-L-E-I-N. Um, so yeah, that's a, a popular art form where artists will uh, just paint outdoors. We'll just sit outside the entire time and, and paint in the open air. Um, and it's usually traditional landscapes um, without, you know, but obviously plein air uh, painting can be done in an urban setting as well. So, but the idea of urban sketching has been popularized by this notion that you, it's, can be done both in and outdoors. So you can collect imagery outdoors and then add color washes to it later. And, you know, inside in your sketchbook, um, there's really, it's more, it's not so traditional. There's more, you know, flexible rules, I guess. I don't know who makes the rules, but I looked it up a few years ago because I was just curious what the, you know, the official difference is according to the internet in those terms. So. Um, feel free to research it more if you have, you know, heard something different. Um, but what I love about it is that um, historically, what I've seen in urban sketching is it's very unstructured and it doesn't necessarily take a lot of skills and uh, your drawing skills can be anywhere. You know, you can just meet yourself where you are. And so I've got a lot of tips and tricks for making satisfying uh, urban sketches like this. Okay, so what are they? Let's get started. I feel like I'm rambling a lot here. Um, so I'm gonna turn to, I'm gonna rip this out so I can refer back to it and then go to a blank page in my sketchbook. I'm running out of blank pages in this one. It's time for a new one. And so I taught a class for many years in a community center here in Austin and an art uh, center where um, we were right next to a beautiful open park space. And a lot of these photographs were actually taken from the, the view outside of uh, the Doherty Art Center in Austin, Texas uh, from this hill. So there was a beautiful view of the Austin skyline. A lot of these pictures are a few years old, the Austin skyline is rapidly changing um, these days. But um, we would often go out and collect sketches in the park and then go back inside the classroom and add uh, watercolor washes or ink washes to them. And it was a lot of fun. It was in a class uh, called Ditcher Eraser, which was a pen and ink based class. And so uh, the idea in that class was, I always joked, not to, you know, completely ditch your eraser, even though that was the title of the class. It was just a catchy name. But I was like the, you know, a more appropriate title for the class would be learn to depend on your eraser less. But that's not as catchy as ditch your eraser. So that was the name of the class. And pencils were welcome in the class. But I had a lot of exercises where you would only use pens. And so tonight I encourage you to do everything with me using pens only to challenge yourself to do some urban sketching here because why not? Um, but if you really are not comfortable with that, then by all means use a pencil first. That was my, my point when we were talking about supplies. Okay, so the way that I would uh, do this in the, the classroom is first before we would go outside in the park that day on our little field trip, I would do some quick sketching on the board, um, talking about composition and um, how to crop the view when you are outside. So I'm hoping that after tonight's class, I will inspire all of you to go do actually do some urban sketching outside and collect some sketches, you know, outdoors, not just working from these photographs. Um, so, but we're, you know, we're virtual here in the virtual world. And so we're gonna work from photographs tonight, but I'm gonna still try to teach this in the same way I would so that you can apply this to some, some actual urban sketching. So 
what I would draw on the board is um, a couple of frames, rectangular frames and um, horizontal frames. So landscape, portrait, and maybe some squares. So thumbnails, we've talked about thumbnails a lot in this class. So, but you could also maybe do a circular frame. You could think about um, maybe organizing a layout in your sketchbook where you maybe sketch out like where you are that day in the park or, you know, sitting on a city bench, you know, and have like some journaling to go with your sketching because that's really fun. Um, then I would talk about composition, which that class that I referenced on uh, landscape studies goes in depth with this. So I'm just going to talk quickly about the rule of thirds. And that idea is that if we have a rectangular frame and we divide that into thirds, then uh, put the areas of interest uh, where these points are intersecting, then we will have a composition that is intriguing to the human eye and makes us want to look at it longer. So all of these photographs have the horizon line either up at the top uh, thirds or dropped down into the bottom thirds in the image. But when you're out, you know, in the world, you don't have necessarily this, you know, this cropping, you have to, there's a lot of information and you have to do some edits. So what you can do when you are actually out sketching in the world is you can do this. You can hold your thumbs up and create kind of a rectangular uh, picture frame to view your, um, your view and to crop things and to see how you're gonna crop it. And really the best trick is to just either have the horizon line down in the the bottom thirds or um, have you know the the ground taking up most of the space and that's going to create an interesting composition i'm not going to go super in depth about composition in this class because i've done it in plenty of other classes but but that's the the trick to keep in mind so in all of these photographs that i've taken i've got the horizon line either in the top thirds or in the bottom uh, thirds of the, the picture frame, whether it's a square or rectangular landscape, portrait, etc. Okay, so the other thing is we're limiting our perspective. So we're not going to worry about the, um, like this one does have some one point perspective happening here, but even that is extremely limited because I didn't necessarily find the um, you know, the vanishing point where these orthogonal lines are pointing. And if that is completely Greek, what I'm saying, then you can refer back to those linear perspective classes that uh, are all on YouTube for you to refer back to. But basically, I mean, they're in there, but I just looked, I just looked with my eyeballs. I did not measure, I did not take a ruler. The linear perspective in this sketch is not perfect because in my opinion, it doesn't need to be. And in my opinion about a lot of art making and what I do in these classes, uh, photorealism is great if that's what you're into. It's not necessarily my jam. I do like things to look, you know, to have a likeness and to resemble um, things in reality. But I also really think it's fun to put our own artistic spin on stuff. And I love implied lines and I love, you know, illustrations that have character to them and that are a little bit imperfect. So why not embrace that? And if all of these, you know, one point perspective orthogonal lines are pointing in the same general direction, like the lines of the road and the lines at the tops of these buildings, then it's going to be convincing enough for um, you know, folks to look at it and and know what they're looking at. Okay, so the other thing is editing what you're you're looking at. So if you were taking some notes right now, the the main tips that I've given you so far are create a frame in your surroundings, 
create a visual frame when you are outside. Um, maybe use your, your camera to create a, and crop or create a frame. So crop and edit your view. Um, use the rule of thirds. Um, limit the perspective. So face the, the front of the building rather than looking at the corner of the building. So you're limiting the, the linear perspective because perspective is kind of hard to omit from the world because perspective refers to our, our point of view, but we're limiting the linear perspective. And then this next tip is to, um, to edit the details and to find the, the details that are the most interesting to you. So this photo, I'm a little disappointed, didn't print out super amazing on my printer. Um, but you all have these photos, um, you know, in the for for you to reference. You you should have them attached to the class um, uh, supply list. But in this image, this is the the one that I looked at for for this sketch right here. Um, looking at this building, I noticed a lot of very interesting details in the architecture, and so. Um, so I asked myself, what's the most interesting part of that architecture to me? And to me, it was the way these, these shapes stack on top of each other at the bottom of the building, and then the way that the balconies stick out on the side. And so then I thought, what's an interesting way that I could illustrate that without, you know, pulling out a ruler, and counting the number of floors and counting the number of windows. And so I decided, you know, because if I'm sitting outside sketching this, there's limited time to do it, right? I'm only going to sit on a park bench or on a balcony and, you know, look at this view for so long before I get tired and hungry or cold or, you know, the light changes and it's time to go inside, right? So, um, so don't, you know, drive yourself nuts trying to get all the details in there. So what I did was this one little line and then these little sketchy lines, right? Okay, so we're going to limit the details. Look for interesting shapes. And then my last tip is to have fun with it, like make it your own in some way. Okay, so let's get started doing this and then also set a timer. I love setting a timer because then you can get a lot of sketching in in a, in a short period of time. So this is how I would do it with my, my classes when we would go outside into the park. I would have everybody find an interesting and comfortable place to sit. And then I would have them draw a bunch of thumbnails in their sketchbook like this. And then I would set a timer for four minutes, two minutes, really four to two minutes. So let's do that right now. I'm going to set a timer for four minutes. And I love this kitchen timer because I can see it, but you can do it on your phone as well. And then let's just look at one of these sketches. And we're just gonna sketch what we're seeing nice and loose. Don't worry about any. Um, and we're gonna use our pen only. So I already started the timer and then I haven't started sketching yet. Use any nib that you want. I'm gonna use the, the point 0.1 nib. So I'm looking for the general shapes. I'm looking at, at this one right here. And it doesn't matter if the thumbnail sketch that you drew is the same orientation as the, the photograph because we're we're limiting the details and we're cropping it however we want. We're just going for it. So I'm looking for the main silhouetted shapes that I'm seeing here. And if you want to put a little bit of perspective in there, if your skill level 
is in alignment with adding linear perspective, then by all means do that. But otherwise, we're just going to meet ourselves where we are. Okay, so I've got a very limited skyline there. Another class you might refer back to are all of the classes that I've had on uh, shading techniques that you use with pen and ink, hatching, cross hatching, stippling and scribbling. I've had several classes on those. Um, so if you search artist loft, hatching and cross hatching, there was an entire class on those. There's an entire class on stippling and scribbling and there've been numerous classes over the past couple of years on those. Okay, so this is where I like to just draw like, maybe I do a diagonal hatching line all the way down the side of one of the buildings, or maybe I do a horizontal hatching line all the way down the front of the building. Or maybe I really like the way the windows are stacked on a certain building and it looks interesting, or maybe I wanna just fill it in with something that I actually don't see, but that I think would look cool. So I draw like some little wonky boxes for the windows. And I could take a ruler out and make this all hyper realistic if I really wanted to. My abilities definitely, you know, are, I could do that if I wanted to, but that's not as fun as just interpreting it in this limited edited way, I think. And it's also very accessible for anybody to sketch in this way. So I love teaching this method. And then for things like trees, I love using a scribble sketch method. I'm just scribbling in some of these trees on the tree line. That's a great way to fill in the clouds too. kind of fill in a cloud shape. And, you know, clouds are very easy to imagine and to change. They don't have to be exactly like you see them for somebody to recognize, oh, hey, that's a cloud in that sketch. So we can interpret those however we want. All right, that was four minutes. Okay, let's move on and do another one. So let's do another four minutes. This is gonna be the whole class, by the way. This is how I would do urban sketching in the park, only we're doing it on Zoom. Okay, so we're gonna find a different view. So a different one of these, or maybe the same one, or maybe you want to continue working on the one that you started in the last one, because I'm not the boss of you. You can do what you want, but maybe change your pen nib, try out some different pen nibs with this exercise and see what you like. Maybe do one where you do a lot of scribble sketching But the more you do this, the looser you will get and the more character that will, will happen, I think. Um, Susan asked, any tips on how to eliminate details when you are doing your sketch? Um, how to eliminate details? Um, draw the main shapes first. So look for the, like right now, I'm not really like I did kind of sit there and, and put a little bit of that, the side of this building, but it's also really hard to see. A lot of these photos are zoomed so far out that you really can't see a lot of hyper detail on the side of these buildings. So unless you're looking at the digital version and you can zoom way in on it. So I would just zoom out and look for the main shapes. 
Um, there is one tip I've been like trying not to say it because it's not my tip and I'm having a hard time remembering the name of the uh, artist who I learned it from. So uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to share it, but then I'm going to put a pin in it and make sure that I, I look up the, um, the artist's name and, and credit them because it's not my device, but um, his name is Frank. I want to say it's Frank Ng, E-N-G. That's what's like coming to mind, but I'm not a hundred percent, but he's written several books. If you just put in Frank Urban Sketching Architect and books, you'll probably find it. And he's got this great, he's got a, a blog that's just pages and pages long with um, lots of urban sketching tips. And um, he's amazing. And he's written several books on architecture um, and, and sketching in this way. But his <clears throat> device that I love for how to get started is to look at any view where you are, um, you know, when you're out and you're, you're sketching in the world, because a lot of it is based on, you know, actually sketching on a scene, on the scene outdoors, urban sketching, not, you know, from a photograph, um, but to look for, I'm trying to find one of these photographs that has like a really obvious one. Um, okay, like let's say in this photograph right here, to look for a vertical line that sticks out, uh, a very obvious, like a vertical line that is a focal point. So maybe it would be this line at the side of the building. And so to get started on, I realize my timer just went off. I didn't really acknowledge it. Um, but let's say, oh, there it is. Never mind. I was about to. This uh, vertical line as the the focal point, and then, or maybe this billboard could be one too. But basically, just look for a vertical line that stands out on the scene because it's really hard to, you know, just to orient yourself when you're out in the world drawing and to know like where to start. But if you find a strong vertical line, then you can build off of that and then find a perpendicular line to that. So it could be the top of this building, or maybe if I was looking at like a street lamp on a corner, it would be the bottom of the sidewalk is perpendicular to the street lamp, right? So a perpendicular line means that it's like this. So the street lamp would be your vertical and then the sidewalk would be, uh, you know, what's perpendicular to that. And then you build off of that as a focal point, you know, just as a way to like get started. Um, I don't know if that answers the question, but I was thinking about drawing just the main shapes um, to limit details. And that's another tip. Um, from that architect. And I will, um, well, next week's class is another free class. So I will, I will look it up and make sure that I'm crediting the right um, person for, for that device. Okay, um, but also having a timer and doing limited time like this, it forces you to have more implied line stuff sketches, which I think looks really fun. Okay, so let's do another one with four minutes on the clock. And I'll look at this one this time. So I'm going to start with this little U, upside down U shaped building. But yeah, the best way to edit is to just uh, look for the main shapes, look for big main shapes. So this building is a horizontal rectangular, rectangular shape mainly. And the building next to it is a more vertical rectangle. 
And then there's uh, also, if you start from the back and work your way forward, then you don't have to worry about overlapping with your pen. Um, but if your pen lines do overlap a little bit, just keep things nice and loose and sketchy. I also don't worry about if I'm getting the architecture 100% accurate, because that's not what this class is about, right? It's about limiting perspective and having fun and learning a way to sketch outdoors that doesn't require a whole lot of drawing skills. So this one's definitely a busier skyline. There's more detail than some of the, the other skylines. And these references. And this one has some very obvious window shapes, or maybe that's a parking garage right there, but they really stand out. So I'm going to put some little boxes in there for the for those. But what I love that usually comes out of doing these exercises with students, um, you know, traditionally when I take people out into a park space and draw like this is that the first couple of sketches might feel a little forced. It might feel a little rigid. It might feel, and maybe y'all are feeling that right now too, where it feels like your sketches aren't coming out maybe quite as loose and free as the examples that I'm showing you. But the more you do this, the more we sit in the park for like an hour and a half usually is the, the time that I would do it because the class that I used to teach started at 6 p.m. and usually it would start getting dark um, around 6.30. We didn't usually do it in the winter time because it, it got dark too fast. But in the summer, we would spend about an hour and a half out there or at the spring and then go back in the classroom. And I always wanted at least, you know, an hour and a half to add watercolor or, or liquid ink to the sketches. My point is, at the end of the, the hour and a half, people were really loosening up and getting the hang of how they wanted to approach this. So just like with anything, practice, y'all. The more you do it, you can't expect to spend five minutes on something and to get the results that you're looking for. You gotta put in the practice and do it multiple times. Okay, so that's been four minutes. Now I want to do some, some two minute sketches and then and then we'll do one that's about 10 or 15 minutes. Well, what do we have? We have 20 minutes, yeah. So let's do a couple of two minute sketches and then we're gonna do one long one. Okay, sorry, I've got two minutes on the clock. Let me do one of these ones that is more silhouetted like that. And hopefully you're switching your nibs out and trying out some different nibs here. I love to say that learning to draw or learning to paint, starting an art practice, if you're just starting out, it's like dating yourself because when you're first dating someone in the early stages, you're, you know, figuring out what kind of music do they like? Um, you know, do they have any pet peeves? What's their favorite food? All that fun stuff, right? And when you're starting an art practice, you know, the number one question that people ask in these classes is what pen am I using? What pencil am I using? Well, that's great information to have, but maybe you prefer to use your point 0.1 nib. And the fact that I'm using my point 0.5 right now doesn't really matter because you've learned after practicing a little bit that you prefer the smaller nib. So 
figure out what your preferences are. You know, if you were painting, you maybe don't know what your favorite paintbrush is. You have to date yourself a little bit in your art practice before you can figure out what your favorite your favorite pen nib or your favorite pencil is to use. Somebody else's preference isn't necessarily going to be yours. Okay, wow, that was two minutes and all I did was this is skyline, the silhouette. Okay, two more minutes on the clock. I can always come back to that one. Let me go a little faster this time. I'm gonna do the same one, but faster. All right, that was two minutes. Okay, so this is again how I would conduct my in-person class outside in the park. So we do a bunch of these quick little time sketches, and then we would usually do those down in the um, lower part of this park space and then I'd have everybody go up on the hill and then that's where we had this really lovely panoramic view and then I'd put 15 minutes on the clock so let me put 15 minutes on the clock and that's going to take us right up to the end of the class but I might stop a couple minutes early so that we can share out because I'd love to see some of y'all's sketches so let's actually do 13 minutes so that we can have two minutes so that I can see y'all sketches. Okay, so now let's draw a panoramic view, panoramic thumbnail sketch. And I still love keeping it like a thumbnail because expecting yourself to fill the entire page in 15 minutes is a lot. Um, okay, so a couple of these images are very panoramic, even though it's not quite like a full panoramic image, but it's still, you could stretch this out across a more panoramic view. This one would be another one to spend some extra time on. It may seem very minimal, but you could really get in there and get all these little wires and everything to happen. And, you know, obviously you can use your pencil first. This is another one would be really great um, for, panoramic sketch, so don't feel like you have to do the same one as me, um, but I'm going to use this image right here. This is also the image that I used for my example in the two classes that are coming up over the next uh, couple of weeks um, using the watercolor markers. 
So, and I have not used my pencil at all tonight. You all may have noticed, um, but you know, you obviously can use yours if you feel more comfortable starting out with your pencil. I'm using my 0.1 nib and I'm just gonna start out. Also, another tip is to, without using a pencil, is to kind of hover over your page. And I, I've talked about this before in other classes too, to just do this little hover motion. Like don't draw a line, but start to create the muscle memory of where you're preparing to sketch that line. And then that'll help you to like, not put as much pressure on your pen when you do make the line and to kind of build your confidence up and to maybe create some implied lines as well. I'm just making my way across the skyline, looking for the main shapes. I maybe have not been 100% accurate with the height of some of these buildings, but that's okay. In my opinion, if you guys were looking for hyper realism, you did not come to the right class. So hopefully nobody's upset about that. The classes on linear perspective definitely will guide you more towards realistic perspective. So yeah, doing a more stretched out panoramic a uh, rectangle like this, I think makes it easier to get everything in a photograph like this in because there's a lot going on here and trying to scrunch this all up into a, a smaller rectangular thumbnail is definitely tricky. But yeah, in this whole thing, I haven't had to worry about one point perspective at all because I'm only putting the front facing shapes of these buildings. There are definitely a few moments where I can see like the corner of the building and the one point perspective that's happening there, but I'm just not drawing that. Okay, so now I can go back through and put the silhouette of the tree line that's in front right here. And maybe you can see that a little better in the digital version of this photograph that there's a tree line. And in the landscape studies class using grayscale, I talk a lot about foreground, middle ground, and background details, like having something in the foreground. And that's definitely something you can incorporate into urban sketching, of course, as well. Um, just a lot of these photographs don't have anything really close to the viewer in, in the image. But a way to create more depth would be to maybe have you know, like a tree branch, uh, or if you were like on a balcony, maybe there's like a plant right in front of you and you put that plant or you maybe have a coffee cup on the ledge, you know, something that's really close to the viewer would create a lot of depth in an, an image like this if you, you know, were, were wanting that. A lot of these images that I included here in these references are very far away. So it's we're mostly just our foreground is is still very distant. But these trees would be in the foreground, the middle ground would be the buildings in between the trees and the buildings that are farthest away. And then the buildings that are the farthest away are in the background.
So I'm just taking my time since we have a little more time here. Now is where I'm like really looking at what I want to emphasize, what details in these buildings I do find the most interesting. So if you can zoom in on these photos, maybe you can find some of those. I love the, the shape of this building, how it's stacked like uh, building blocks that are a little off center. So I can emphasize that by putting a little more detail on that one. And maybe really getting in there and noticing what the windows are doing on that particular building. And that can create a focal point just by paying more attention to it and giving it more, a little more love. Hopefully you just, oh, yeah. Um, Patty would like to know if she should be paying attention to scale. If you want to, Patty, if you would like the scale to be accurate, then maybe, you know, take some visual measurements and note like, cause I definitely got away from scale a little bit here cause this building is not quite as tall as I made it in my sketch, this building, like everything is pretty much on the same level right here, um, except for these are a little taller, but I accidentally went a little high with that one. So yeah, I mean, one way that you could pay attention to scale is you could um, sort of make like a, a sketched out grid of the photograph or just, you know, take note of the fact that um, from the top of the, uh, the, the frame here that this building only goes about almost halfway. So you could say like the halfway line on my thumbnail is, I'm just gonna draw on the picture with my, my pencil. So like the halfway line on the picture Actually, that's a little higher up than halfway. Um, but that this building doesn't even quite reach the halfway line, right? Um, and then, you know, just kind of create like a, a scale for yourself in that way. Like take some measurements with your pencil and note how high each building is. And then, you know, sketch them in, in a way that, that makes them measure up in reference to each other. Um, yeah, so that would be the easiest way to pay attention to, to scale. Um, but I was just gonna say, hopefully this, um, this class has inspired you all to get outside and do some urban sketching in the wild. And all of these tips are extremely helpful in, I think, making it fun and not, and, you know, just getting started with it because it's a very, in, or it can be intimidating. And, um, you know, yeah, you're working against the elements because you get all set up outside and then it might be a really windy day or you know it might be cold or you know any number of things that you might encounter outside that make it challenging for you to stay in that spot for a long time so using all of these tricks will enable you to gather some material and some sketches that you can then go back into your studio or your kitchen table or wherever you make art indoors. And then we can add to that using the techniques that I'm gonna cover with the, the watercolor uh, markers in the next couple of weeks. So in the next two weeks, we'll be talking about taking a sketch like this. And again, it's gonna be limited perspective and not a whole lot of detail, but we're gonna add um, some watercolor to it and you can use 
traditional watercolors, or you can use the Artist Loft watercolor pencil, or sorry, markers that I'm gonna be using. And the reason I chose the watercolor markers is because you could easily take those out into the park, just your watercolor markers and, you know, a water bottle and like a little, or a water pen and a paintbrush. And you could do all of this, you know, out outdoors. You could obviously do it with real watercolor paint outside too, but I thought the watercolor markers would be fun. And I also haven't used the watercolor markers in a while for a class. And I love the way that they bleed. And there's a lot of really fun stuff that we can do with them with um, urban sketching and adding washes to th this imagery. Because if we take limited perspective imagery like this and then add and we do it on watercolor paper, which we will be doing in the, the next two classes, and then add the watercolor marker washes to it, and we can build up and add more details to them. So, you know, leaving these kind of empty and not putting a ton of detail into them can really, you know, create a nice playground for you to add some fun washes of color. And then I've got the premium class on drawing clouds after that. So if you really want to level up your cloud drawing skills, we've got that premium class to follow up the, the urban sketching using the, the watercolor markers. But that is it um, for me. But I'd love to see some of y'all's sketches as well. Um, so if you want to share what you did tonight, just hold up your sketches and Chanel can spotlight you. Oh, I'm seeing some awesome stuff. Yeah, I love it. And yeah, any area that you didn't fill in, um, you know, we can do that same sort of thing next week. We'll start out with one of these sketches and then we'll build on it using the watercolor markers and fill things in. Oh, look at that. Love it. I love all the scribble sketching. Very nice. Oh, I love all the different frames. Oh, I can tell you guys really had some fun with these. Oh, I like how it looks like a hand is holding that circle right there. Very cool. Oh, look at that. I recognize intramural fields. <laughs> That's where I took that photograph. In, in Austin, one of my favorite, favorite places because you get that wide open space. It's hard to find in a urban landscape. I love it. Oh, and those very nice clouds too. Very nice. You got that stacked building that I was focusing on. See you emphasizing that one as well. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Really nice. Wow, you did almost every image there. You were really getting into the zone. I love it. Those trees are really nice, too. Oh, that one's nice. Oh, I can tell you really zoomed in on some of those buildings. We oh, got some more. Oh, yes. Love the power lines. Love it. There's something about power lines on a silhouetted. Oh, hold it up a little higher. Yes, I see those power lines there too. Oh, and I love the way you stacked those buildings. Oh, and I like how you almost did like a curve on the horizon on the, the circle. It feels like snow globe. Oh, I love it. I can tell y'all, y'all had some fun with these and that makes it so rewarding for me. Okay, we'll keep sketching. Please do some uh, outdoor sketching this week and maybe go ahead and grab your watercolor paper and uh, get a sketch going on some watercolor paper and gather your own images or you're welcome to keep using mine. And then uh, I'll show you even more fun tips and tricks for adding splashes of color to them over the next couple of weeks in, uh, in the upcoming two free classes using watercolor markers. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.